Hello, my beautiful co-creators. Lilu here. I'm in London today on the Juicy Living Tour with Tony Samara that I have already interviewed several times. A few years ago, huh? we connected. That's right. That's right. And it's nice to be here again speaking to you. Yes. <laughs> Same for me. I really do love your, your energy. And, and I love, um, you know, for those of you that watch these videos, there is the before and the after the interview. And, and some teachers, you know, it feels a little bit different. But with you, you're the same. You're the same on camera, off camera. I love your energy and the space you give to others for to just be themselves and who they are and that's what a beautiful gift it is in this world at this point in time I feel yes. thank you I think it's just natural you know people just have to be themselves and that spirituality yes yeah so you're an author you wrote shaman's wisdom and you're a spiritual teacher you tra you travel the world and um, um, you're really, I guess, bridging an ancient knowledge into this world. What, what is your, your intention? Well, my intention really is to make people aware that there is more to life than just the mundane and just the everyday things that we get caught up in. And the way I do this is not by explaining this is what you have to see or this is what you have to believe or this is what you have to think, but rather just explaining that sometimes when we are caught in different aspects of life that we don't need to stay there for very long. So the books and my courses are about reminding people that there is more and that is my intention, you know, to bring more joy, more light, more happiness to people but in everyday circumstances so that you don't have to leave your life and find something different. Yeah. How, how can you find spirituality as an active, real, tangible, everyday experience. Yeah, yeah. Because you had quite an interesting life. Huh? You, you were born in the UK. You, you traveled and lived in Egypt, in Norway. You went around the world and nor and learned shamanism. And uh, you were, you were coming from. Uh, you were raised, from my understanding, from a quite tight family, and you broke free from that system, haven't you? Which is more or less what we're going through as a society right now, no? Exactly. And I think this makes it easier for me to speak to people on different levels, that I have a family that is very loving, but basically, you know, they were very conservative and everyday, um, caught up in the everyday lifestyle that people are mm -hmm. today. And I feel that there was something more um, calling me as a child. Yeah. And today, in the world today, there is something more that is calling everyone to look at life in a different way. And because I went through that experience, I feel it's easier yeah. to be a bridge to that experience in the world today. And it's important today, it's not just one person, uh -huh. but there is a mass movement of consciousness. And it's easy, you know, to understand what that means if we have the right steps. And the right steps are always individual to a person, but also they're um, historical and ancient. You know, people have done this for thousands of years so you know there are some very real steps that are well tried and this is what I'm hoping to bring to people uh -huh. that this ancient knowledge is relevant in this modern world uh -huh. is it can we talk about steps even these days when things don't appear to be linear like we're really waking up to a non-linear way of life I think a lot of us can we even talk about steps is it something that we can all apply in our life and can you describe those Wow, that is complex. <laughs> but the steps are, of course, not linear. You know, there is nothing linear. That's just our mind that believes in um, a dualistic way of seeing the world or a linear time frame. Mm -hmm. um, we are much more complex. And I think that is the first step, you know, to realize that there is more to us than just the mind or um, the social aspect or that we understand our belief systems. Mm -hmm. um, and once we understand that, I think we connect to something I call the heart or our center and from there we can here deep inside here deep inside there. <laughs> yeah. okay. and I think from there we recognize that there is a very clear path um, that is individual to each person so I can't say you know every step this is how you do it I can just explain you know when you connect to that intuitive deep feeling then it's very clear where you need to go um, and the steps are never to be caught up in judgment, never to be caught up in the judgment of yourself or yeah. other people, but to be open. And when you do that, your mind expands and is able to see much more than 
what we believe is possible. And in quantum physics, for example, this is known as an expanded state of awareness. And of course, then it becomes multidimensional and it's beyond linear in the sense that there is so much, we call this the unconscious perhaps in psychology, mm -hmm. um, there is so much more that we only understand when we are there and from that space then we can understand more. So it's impossible to map out everything from the beginning. It's almost the experience takes you closer mm -hmm. and then from that closeness to your own heart, to your own intuition, mm -hmm. you can see much more uh, where to go. Um, and I feel this is happening to children today and also to many people that we, we are breaking free from the old paradigms, from the old belief systems, from the old cultural norms that um, govern society, you know, economy, our culture, science, education. And it's almost like we don't know where to go, but on some level, some part of us does know, and we have to just get there to that point where we trust that knowingness to allow ourselves to go to that space. Mm -hmm. um, I know that sounds very esoteric and not very tangible, but I don't like to simplify what is not so simple. And mm -hmm. you know, life is complex mm -hmm. on one level, life. Uh, and yet so simple. And, and very simple, yes. you know, when you are in touch with your heart, everything is very clear. Yes. Um, but you know, to get there, is a whole process, yes. uh, and that is the process that I like to, you know, work with um, people and uh, groups to explain that, that it is possible. Because often we give up, you know, after we try many times. There is that sense of it's impossible, or it's not. Why bother? Why bother? Do you know, I've tried and it mm -hmm. doesn't work. Meditation, it's a great idea, but you know, I tried it and my mind just keeps making too much noise. You know, and we get to points where we give up. Yeah. And that is where I work with people that it's not at all possible to give up when you reach that point because that is the point where you're beginning to understand. You know, when you get to that more unknown space where the ground is not so solid, where, you know, there is no clear map. Okay, I've been educated to think and do things in this way. When you don't have that education or belief system anymore and you rely on something that's more unknown, what you do and mm -hmm. that becomes uncomfortable because we're taught in our society to always have everything under control the mind thinks the body follows the mind and you know there's a whole mechanism to how we do things mm -hmm. and when that is challenged like anything you know like any addiction it becomes difficult to deal with yeah. and, and we have this big addiction it feels to to the fear uh, and, and we had we did this beautiful video in the park in London a few years ago that was seen by many and it really helped and I was going through myself some really huge panic attacks and I think it's part is this part of also this this evolution because it shakes us up big time exactly and you know many people are going through what you went through now yeah. and the problem is you know when many people go through fear or when things are challenged there is a tendency to regress, to go back to yeah. what you know, even though it's dysfunctional, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's safer because you know yeah. that space. Um, and unless you have someone or something or a situation, it could be art or poetry or an inspiration from some aspect of life that says you can go beyond that fear, you can go beyond that regressing to what you know and go t into more deeply into the unknown, then <laughs> Why would we, you know, especially yeah. when we're dealing with everyday life, uh, as you said, you know, a few years ago, the panic and the fear takes over. It and tetanizes you, exactly. it blocks you, it stops you. Exactly. Tell us again your practical, because I know you have a lot of practical tools and I think it, it might be important here for people that will really feel petrified. Um, what, what can we do in those instances? Exactly. So, I mean, to make it more practical, if you have a job and you lose your job, you know, okay, what you do. <laughs> you know, you can imagine that, okay, everything will flow and I trust, but then it comes down to paying the bills and the tendency is to panic. Okay, you know, I haven't got a job, so how will I actually manage? And because we don't know how to manage in a creative way and we only know the old way of managing, yeah. then it, there is a challenge and we have to deal with the practicality of what do we do in that moment? Yeah. We can't just rely on an idea of in the future. We have to deal with the situation. And the situation is always the body. 
for me. Yeah, always come back to the body because if you create tension in the body, that creates a whole mechanism of fear. It allows the fear, that of course is in the mind, to take hold to the breath, to to the muscles of the body, to your alignment, you know, your muscular alignment, to the way you hold yourself, you present yourself, your unconscious communication to the world. And then you portray a belief system to the world and it's reflected back to you. But if you can relax in that moment by taking a deep breath and allowing for you to say, okay, I trust the breath, mm -hmm. because that's tangible, not just an idea of something, and really feel the beauty of being alive in that moment, and in that moment bring into that space the possibility that there is an endless potential, you know, I lose my job, but maybe I lose my job because I can find something better. And when you are free of the tension, then that something better has the ability to come into that space, mm -hmm. the body, mm -hmm. the breath, and you can express that excitement that comes with changing. And that is life, you know, when you begin to change, um, it is exciting because mm -hmm. anything that remains static is dead. <laughs> inside or outside or living or non-living, you know, emotional, uh, mental. Uh, and, you know, we as human beings need change and real tangible change, but we're afraid of change because we want to hold on to the old. So when we allow that new feeling in the body to really be very clear, and I call this intention, so you put out that intention to the world, to yourself, to the people around you, mm -hmm. the breath changes, your body posture changes and you begin to touch upon potential in quantum physics. This is um, the possibilities, the endless possibilities that are there. And instead of going back, you move forward and touch upon something that changes you from who you are now to making the dream more real, the dream that you have about life more real. So mm -hmm. the potential becomes actualized in your breath, in your body and also manifested in your communication to the world. And so what you receive back is the similar communication that that dream becomes real because people reflect back that dream to you. You, me you may meet someone or a situation that supports that new consciousness, the birth of that new consciousness in a very tangible way. And you don't know because we don't know who knows the future. I mean, some people know the future, but yes. really, we don't know the future until we trust it enough to allow the future to come into the present moment, rather than believing that the past is the present moment. Mm -hmm. So our focus point is that unknown future, because we, it's not, we were raised more as having a goal or something really precise and bringing it into manifestation, but it feels more and more now that um, if we're aligned with our heart and our soul, things come to us that corresponds to who we are instead of, uh, because we, we, we used to use a lot the mind. So how could, so, so we just trust in the unknown, into the universe, into something greater than ourselves and surrender to that just blindly even, or? <laughs> You know, I don't want to sound new agey, you know, you just <laughs> trust something and it will flow because it takes work. Yes. It, it does. Sometimes you're um, lucky enough to have the grace of the universe support you immediately. Mm -hmm. But for most people, there is a little bit of work to um, create that change. You know, we had to work to do anything in life, you know, to walk. You know, it took a few years to learn to take those first steps. And it's the same with any change. You know, it takes a little bit of work. So if we trust um, that depth inside of ourselves and that intention inside of ourselves with the knowingness that it's possible mm -hmm. and we need to work to make that possibility real, mm -hmm. then it's different from just saying, I trust the universe mm -hmm. in the sense that you're just hoping for things to fall into place, because you have to make them fall into place. Yeah. It requires that your energy really believes that that is possible, and you have to interact with those possibilities. You don't just sit back and hope that they will fall into your lap. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes yes. it happens, but for most people, there needs to be an effort, but a joyous effort in, in, in the action that you're um, 
interacting with people, with your new boss, with, you know, in relationship, there has to be a real tangible interaction. So I think once you relax the body and you are aware of the breath, the trust is not just the unknown, but the belief that the potential is real. So you have to really mm. believe that it's real. So we have to make that first step. I, f I feel we have to make that first step and then the magic shows up. But exactly. it's it's hard to ask for the magic. We have we have to be the one stepping in the dream. Yeah. So like say if someone is afraid and you say, okay, no, I really believe that I'm not. Mm -hmm. And you hold that posture that you're not really confident about anything. It doesn't work because the mind doesn't rule the heart. You know, you mm -hmm. can't trick the heart. No. It has to <laughs> well, I don't think so. <laughs> I think you have to be real um, in the sense that the heart has to feel, okay, I really trust this situation. I really trust that it's possible to find a new job or to change the circumstances that I'm facing at the moment and feel it. Mm -hmm. And that feeling, you know, comes from an awareness it doesn't just come from tricking yourself and saying, okay, I have to feel good or I have to pretend I feel good. And, you know, awareness is magical because once you have that awareness, once you're in the space, the expanded consciousness, then the awareness is there because you touch potential. You really see mm -hmm. that potential. And mm -hmm. this is why people learn to meditate so that the mind mm -hmm. is focused mm -hmm. and doesn't just go back to fear or go back to old paradigms, but so focused that it can move to that new space, mm. the unknown space. And I love what you say quite often is that the more we evolve as human beings, the more we need silence in our life. Exactly. Um, that is meditation, basically. Do you know, the silence is when you are so present, there is so much more that um, is there mm -hmm. that you don't need the noise that most people have in the world today because there is so much beauty there is so much light there is so much energy and there is so much excitement you know simply looking at a tree is an experience um, that goes beyond oh yeah this is a beautiful tree and then what's next mm -hmm. you know you actually or a human being you know you can actually see their spirit their essence their soul and that requires silence requires the silence where the mind is not constantly running from one space to another it's focused and it requires the silence where the heart can feel and be present to the situation more deeply it's like a relationship you know if you're really in love with a person you know you can't be thinking about your mortgage and feeling the love that requires that you're present yeah. to that person you know you have to be silent and present to each situation as it presents itself and I feel that is something that is not so common in the Western world especially at this point where we are challenged so deeply that the mind is um, what's the word is struggling to find a solution mm -hmm. to the situation mm -hmm. so the mind becomes very active and we stress and we worry um, and I feel that is the opposite of what we need to do and hence why meditation is so important to create that sense of silence that sense of presence mm -hmm. would you have some other little tools for us that you think are important and like you would like to share right now as we're into closing this this conversation yes yes i think people need to understand that spirituality is not very serious <laughs> because you know that's the Let's idea make it juicy come on <laughs> <laughs> that that's the idea we have you know by watching some of the eastern and this is not a criticism the eastern ways of dealing with spirituality you sit in a monastery and you meditate yeah. and you're quiet and you're very you know persistent serious in being free and enlightened and i think that is absolutely the opposite of what you need to do of course you have to be a little bit serious in life but in the end it's about joy because if your heart mm -hmm. feels happy if you are joyous inside there is that expanded space inside of your body that is excited to keep repeating the experience many many times I if it's a struggle or if it's another extra thing that you have to do in everyday life uh, I have to sit down and meditate for 20 minutes mm -hmm. you know it's it's a burden 
And this is why, for example, children are so fascinating, because they turn everything into a game. And so we can turn spirituality into an adventurous game. We can play with life rather than get caught up in trying to understand why am I suffering or why is there so much pain. You know, we can just play a little bit. And that requires that your heart feels joy. And one practical thing that people can do is just look at things that make them joyous rather than unhappy. And I think from that state of consciousness, the joy, the happiness, it's easier to be free. I, I, I just came back from uh, Mexico again and uh, speaking with the Mayans there and it's very much present in their culture, the alegría. Yes. It's very much there and they said if you focus on that, just that, this is, this is it, the joy in the heart. Exactly and I think we have a lot to be joyous about yeah. because th this year is an amazing transformative year and change always brings more joy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh la la, let's see what the, the, this changes, this new, uh, this 2012 and beyond uh, brings us. Thank you, Tony. Thank you for, uh, for this conversation and so we can put it out in the world and, and have people uh, transform, uplift, share, whatever feels right, have a laugh or, you know, this is, this is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Much love, my beautiful co-creators from London. <laughs>